Hello guys, Nigel here again with you from Nigel's Modeling Bench and here we are with another part of this, I think this is part three, um, of the review of this beautiful HPH 148 scale B52 Strata Fortress. Doing this review in parts because it comes in boxes like you can see and every box is like a model in itself. So um, basically yeah, it's going to take its time. Now in my review I did yesterday where we covered the fuselage, the wing and we looked at all the tail planes and everything. Um, in that one, Phil asked, Phil Civiter asked if the next one could be undercarriage. So, yes, Phil, today we're going to look at box two, which is undercarriage. And I think we're going to have a look as well at box three, if we get time, which is the cockpit and the standard weapons. And we can pretty much whip through the cockpit because we already looked at the 30 second scale cockpit. And I think that's just basically a, a scale up of that. So it should be pretty much identical. So just to refresh, we'll look at the instructions first. Um, with this undercarriage because it is quite a complicated setup. It's not like your normal sort of, you know, your, your Itulary, I've got one here, your Itulary um, 70 seconds ago where you just, you know, you put the roofs in and then you close the fuselage halves up and that's it. And there's some detail inside there on the fuselage. But um, in fact, this one is correct. It's got the two bumps in it here and then the complicated front. The Model Collect has two complicated and the Ravel has two lots of bumps. So yeah. Um, I'm going to make a corrected wheel bay roof for the model collect kit. So, um, and this one obviously is correct as well. This is the most accurate B52 you could buy. So, uh, other than the real thing. So, um, start looking at all this, all resin parts obviously. So we've got the actual walls here. This is the rear undercarriage bay. And this bit here, in case you're wondering, this is a, we'll, we'll show you this. That actually goes inside the fuselage. And then the, the actual undercarriage bay will sit up against it. So this, this section here will be up against the roof of the fuselage. And this section here will butt up, upside down, butt up into the bottom of it. So it makes it all very, very rigid. And that will also be like a stiffening bulkhead within the fuselage as well. So we've got lots of pulley detail we're going to add in here. And then we've got these beautiful side walls that even come around. Just to show this, these parts here, these side walls, they're the interior di uh, diameter, the interior detail for this area here inside here so you're even getting detail that you know you're only going to see if you really look like that and then the gear doors are going to be in the way so we also get beautifully detailed gear doors as well so um it's going to be a real pleasure this one so we can see it all coming together there and then that's basically the rear one for for now done uh, front one as you can see is a lot more complex we've got the air conditioning unit there we've got the the complicated floor with all the structure in it um Electrical boxes here and more electrical boxes there. We've got some pipe work, some um, pressure bottles. I don't know if that's a fire extinguisher or oxygen bottle or what it is. Um, and then, you know, going through assembling it all, assembling everything onto the roof. And then we can come along, add all this side detail. And again, like I said, this is the area here up underneath. Um, absolutely beautiful. It's a lot of this, this, this detail in this area that actually got me to buy this, this model. Um, and then we can see you've got all the pipe work going in there. Obviously, you can add more wires and cables. Get over to anyz.io. That's N Y Z. Sorry, A N Y Z or Y Z. Dot I O. Um, I had people asking because the trouble is it's spelled N A N Y Z or A N Y Z. Um, in fact, the easiest thing to do is turn my board over and show you this guy here. Anyz.io. He does all your resin moulded or resin printed um, junctions and all the different sizes of braided cables and everything. Anything you could want to add super detail to cockpits, undercarriage bays, whatever, head on over to him. He also does some beautiful cockpit decal sets. I may do another review of it all soon because I've done one but it was quite a while back. I digress. Um, so here's all the cockpit, de the, uh, cockpit the undercarriage detail here. And we've got it all ready to go into the fuselage. Then we're going to add our PE. Now you probably add the PE while you're going, um, but we've got PE shelves here, all the metal shelves and everything. Um, we've got all the little brackets here. We've got the the hooks that go in and actually, um, actually, well, actually they're hinges, aren't they? And then uh, and then we're into the actual undercarriage legs and everything. And we've got the wheels and tires, all the little bits and pieces. See the undercarriage legs here. I can't wait to see this. I haven't seen any of this yet. I haven't opened any of these boxes. It's all done fresh for you so uh, we all get surprised together um, and it's telling you here how to fit it all into the fuselage which is going to be fun so there we go so let's have a look at what we've got 
in our box for undercarriage. So here's the box, as you can see, all untouched, and it's all come beautifully packed. It's a bubble wrap here wrapped up in the sides, and then we've got one big bag of resin here, which is not the best of ideas, HPH. I bet there's going to be some broken parts in here. And we've got some one loose bag there, and then this big bag here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this down here, get this box over here out of the way, and then we can have a look. If anybody can hear a buzzing in the background, it's not a dodgy mic or dodgy sound or anything. I've got a fan on. It's very muggy here today in the UK, so um, I've got a fan on. So let's first of all have a look at this bag here. So these are our outrigger legs, and they look quite stunning. Straight away they look stunning. So we've got our outrigger bays here, which aren't falling apart, that's how they're designed. They're designed in two sections, so you sort of slide one in, then you slide the other one in, and then you lock them together. So we can see on there we've got some stunning detail on those, um, those ribs and stiffeners and stuff. Absolutely stunning, really, really nice. So I'm not sure if there's going to be some PE detail or something to go in there. Um, they look a bit, a little bit simple. And we've got our um, <clears throat> tires. Sorry, guys, tickly throat. Tires and wheels, um, which are some of the nicest I think I've ever seen. Get a load of that. Look at the detail on those tires. Comes free with fingerprints as well. Look. Absolutely gorgeous. The rim of that wheel looks a bit damaged, or is it just flash? I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, that, that rim looks a little bit damaged. But never mind, it's, it's uh, inward facing, so it'll be up against the door. Really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Um, I think what I might do is make a mould of that wheel myself, and then I can replace that one, because that that wheel is damaged. This is one of the problems about bagging stuff up. Um, there's a few resin companies out there that do just stick stuff in bags. Other people tend to put foam in to keep it all. If you look at the um, Ed Edward stuff, the, the brassin, um, or the, the res brassin, I think they call it, and it, they, they put foam in there to keep it all, you know, so it can't all move. It's when it all moves around and knocks against each other, it's when they get damaged like that. So um, I should be putting some paper around that before I put it back together. So we've got our beautiful little legs here. Again, we've got some damage on there. You can see there's a piece broken off. So, uh, I thought we were going to be perfect perfection with this kit, but we're not. We're finding damage. So, uh, in fact, that piece is broken off in the mould by the look of it because I don't have it here as a piece of flash in the bag or anything. So, if they're the same, I might take a mould off of that one or just repair that one. We shall see. But, um, very very flimsy and it's going to get broken because it's so beautifully detailed so I will give them that and then those legs are uh, are quite stunning a couple of bubbles on there but not going to worry about that really really nice I'm guessing they have yes they have bloody hell they have they've got a steel rod in them you can see there I was just about to say I'm guessing they haven't got it but they have and it looks, oh my god, it goes all the way down through to here. Wow. You can see the steel there. So, um, yeah, it looks like they've actually got a steel pin going in there all the way up. Wow. That's impressive. And then we've got the doors here, which are stunning. You can see they're 3D printed because they've got the lines in them, which is why I don't like 3D printing. But, um, Quick bit of Mr. Surface, sir. Quick going over some sanding sticks and they'll be gone. So the worst thing with that is, you know, you, you get these lines in it from 3D printing, you paint it, put a nice wash on there, and, and the wash picks up in all the lines. So <laughs> you, you end up looking like a wood grain finish. So I'm going to put all that carefully to one side, and then I'm going to repackage that myself before I put it all away again because uh, I don't want any more damage happening to that stuff. In fact, there is a piece of resin in there might be it who knows right here we go this is the big box now we're sure to find some damage in here I did notice on Jared's kit these were broken but looks like mine have uh, survived I'm gonna repackage all this this is crazy putting all this in one bag come on guys 
what were they thinking? So there's one bit there. Here's all our pipe work and everything. I can't believe they put all this in a bag. When you look at how flimsy all this is, I mean, look at this here. These legs sticking up. You know, what were they thinking? We've got our wheels and tyres, which are very, very nice indeed. They are actually looking at our website. It looks like they're going to be releasing some nice wheels and tyres in 70 second scale as well. So that's pretty cool. So we've got some beautiful doors here. Beautiful undercarriage doors. A couple of boxes. We'll get all this out and then we'll have a good look at it. And there we go. We can see we've got some bits there in the bag. I'm not going to tip out. We've got We've got some flash there, we've got pipe there. I'm not sure if that's broken or if it's a complete pipe, but uh, anyway, let's go complete pipe from there. Look. So we'll put that to one side, and I'm going to stop the film after I've done this and put it all away carefully because uh, I'm not going to um, package it the way the same as they have. I'm just going to shake this off. So we can see here we've got um, it's a structural members for the insides of the uh, gear bays. Absolutely beautifully cast. Got those tiny bits of flash in between all the stiffener holes which you'll have to poke through but um, you can see they've kind of chamfered the backs of them so that when you look at the front of them they look like a really thin sheet and this is where you get the thing this is where your difference comes in companies like like HPH and companies like for example um, I'm not going to name any because it's just not fair but someone like Wingnut Wings is the same as HPH they're modellers that are making models for modellers and they're making it as a model that is going to be built by a modeller, not as some 3D render on a screen that's just going to be chucked into a machine and machine a bloody mould up and make it. This is, you know, they know what we want and they're giving it to us. So really, really nice. Um, but there's some beautiful bolt detail, rivet detail and everything on there. So yeah, absolutely stunning, really impressive. Um, doors here, we've got two here the same by the look of it. No, they're not. They're not the same. So we've got this one. They look the same here, but then they've got this extra extra detail here. Again, we've got some bits and pieces on there. I'm going to... There's a piece of the mould there. A little piece of HPH mould, look that green colour. Um, so yeah, really, really nice. Beautifully moulded. Again, we can see the lines from the 3D printing, unfortunately, but uh, they're nothing like as obvious as they were on those outrigger doors. And then the outer faces of them there, which are just basically plain. There's no feature to them whatsoever. Um, in fact, I must check my references. I don't know if they were actually skinned with a, a, a plastic material or um, or just you know, flush riveted. I'll have to check. I'd never thought of that. So there we go. That's the uh, that's those doors. And I've got these other doors here, which look the same. Yeah, they're the same. Yeah, so we've got three there, the same. So, um, very, very nice indeed. Nope, they are different. But <laughs> there's me thinking they're the same. There's this one with this detail up here, at the top. Then there's this one with the three round panels in there. This one's got no round panels in there. And this one's got the three... Okay, there's two the same. <laughs> wow. Sorry, guys, I must be boring as hell. So, um, there we are. Uh, wheels and tyres, four sheets of these, and as we can see, we've got a tiny little bubble in that one, but I'm not going to worry about that. Let's look at another one. Here we go. So, absolutely stunning detail. The tyre lettering is awesome. Not sure if these should be flat spotted or not. A lot of these modern jets tyres don't tend to flat spot, in my opinion, so we'll see. But those wheels are just stunning. So there they are. Absolutely gorgeous. Get those out of the way. So I'm saving these. And then we've got some sort of box here, which is broken out of the uh, broken out of that fret over there. You can see there that's come out of that's broken out of there. This one's also broken out. But uh, again, another another couple of boxes there. It looks like we've got a piece, that was just a piece of flash, or we've got a piece missing. 
So uh, we shall have to see. I'll have to get on to HPH if we have. So uh, there we go. We've got that one there. So we've got our air conditioning unit. We've got more electrical boxes. All stunning. All beautifully detailed. There. Absolutely lovely. Really, really nice. So that's that one there. Okay, I'm thinking that that is probably... That's probably come from there. I'll have to have a look afterwards. We've got a couple of... Um, Little what looks like shaft supports there or something. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so we've got more detail here on this box. Just beautiful. So I don't all I know is there's boxes, guys. I'm not sure what they all do. I'm sure Harold will come along and say that's the such and such box, because um I think he goes to bed every night with B fifty two books and then reads them in the morning and then probably when he's on the train he reads B fifty two books. His knowledge is unbelievable. So um there we go, we've got the pulley system there it looks like. And then we've got some um, arms for the undercarriage legs there. There's a little bit of flash on that one. We've got a couple of bubbles, but you know, this is resin moulding, that's part of it guys. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, pipe work there, which you can see is absolutely stunning. Really, really beautiful. I can't believe more of this isn't broken. Really, really nice. And then we've got some actuators here. We've got our um, oleos there. Or scissors, oleo scissors, I think you call them, isn't it? Really, really beautiful. You can see the detail on those actuators. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Really, really impressed with this kit. And here's the piece de resistance. And as I was worried about. I needn't have worried. There is a massive piece of brass in there. Um, I'm not sure how far up it's going to go. I can't see it coming out up here. I'm guessing it's just in this area here, so it's, it's, good, it's protecting this area here. But um, I can't see any in the axles themselves. But anyway, the detail is... Um, Nothing short of stunning. There we go. That's our undercarriage legs. So there's, I'm not sure this is the fore or aft, but uh, I know they're both different. So we've got, yeah, you can see there's part of a leg there. Part of a steel leg there, look. Just th showing through. Now, I don't know if that's going to be visible on the finished model. It'll probably be covered by the door. So they've obviously got a thick brass leg. You can see the end of the brass there. Okay, and then, so that's like, I don't know, 3 mil diameter, and then we've got this thinner steel here running up there, so obviously it's all going to be able to take a knock and, and not just fracture. Um, but that piece of steel is obviously slightly dislocated because it's come out, so probably best just leave that as it is. And uh, it'll probably covered covered within the fuselage anyway, but uh, yeah, really, really stunning. Got some pulleys, I think, there. And then the other side is just pretty much the same. And we've got these um, actuators here, which actually steer the wheels. Because as you know, the um, the B52 has got a, a, a oh, I can't think what it's called. <laughs> but basically, it can it can yaw um, and land. You know, it can it can land with the wheels steered, so the plane can land into the wind. The 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 the, the actual aerofoil sections of the wings are into the wind. And the runway's that way, it can actually land like that, so the wheels would steer. So, um, but you probably knew that anyway, if you knew anything about B-52s. So, um, and there's the other set of undercarriage there. Again, we've got a bit of a broken leg there. But that's going to be easy enough to repair again there. Probably because it's all um, just bagged up together. So there we are. So I'm going to stop this video now and put all this away properly before we go any further, because I don't just want to chuck it all back in a bag. And there we go, bagging Nigel style. So, uh, yeah, that's taken me about a good 25 minutes to do, mind you. But, um, yeah, now the, the wheels and tyres are cut into fours and they're all backed up so they can't get damaged. And I've got um, I've got tissue paper around all the, the uh, dodgy parts. That's all the pipe work. They've got the main undercarriage legs there all wrapped up. So now it can't get damaged. This, this one here could, I guess, I'll make sure this one goes on the top. But um, 
think I'm really lucky that not more has got damaged because I know that when Jared did his review he's got some damage on his um, I can't remember where it was there but there's some bits broken on his so uh, yeah let's get all this put away and then we'll look at the other side of the box right there we go so let's look at this side now so this side you've got more inner wall detail you've got those great big pieces and another load of stuff bagged up together but that all looks fairly tough so it should be okay right so first of all let's have a look in here um, now these are if I don't even need to get them out these are basically the stiffeners that go above so that's going to sit in the fuselage in the roof of the fuselage and then your undercarriage bay and your bomb bay it's going to sit up against there so it stops it you know it gives you a it's giving you support for your undercarriage B, it means the whole fuselage is, you know, the load spread out through the fuselage rather than having it all in four little location points or something. Um, and also it's giving you bulkhead so it's going to stiffen up your fuselage. So really, really nice, lovely touch there. I'm not sure what they are there. We've got these, all these moulded bars and because of the way it's packaged, which is a bit daft, uh, you can see that some of them have got broken off. Some of the smaller ones so I mean I probably replaced those with plastic one anyway because the resin parts will be so brittle but it looks like they've been broken before they were packaged because I don't even have the, oh there's there's a couple there there's a couple in the bottom of the bag there I'm not exactly sure what they are but again um absolutely crazy packaging crazy 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 still never mind so um that can go back in the box like so and then here we've got these interior uh, bay areas which are beautiful um, I don't know of any other kit that gives you this kind of detail there is an Eddard undercarriage detail set for the model collect kit but the problem is the model collect kit undercarriage bay is incorrect on the back end so I'm assuming the Eddard will be made to fit the kit that's what they have to do they can't go making uh, changes so there we go that's the interior detail so that's the side wall detail of the um, of the bay so they're going to sort of sit in like this so you're not really going to see much of them but um you know it's there nonetheless and it's really really nice a little bit of flash on there but uh yeah a little bit of cleanup on the edges but hey that's modeling and a little mold plug there to be cut away although it might be okay to just leave it there because uh, it probably doesn't butt up against anything and then we've got the same here there's basically your your four different different ones there so we'll put those away we'll wrap those up in some tissue and then here once again we've got our multiple bag of parts but they all look fairly flat so there shouldn't be any damage on these should have said that should I don't one of these will be destroyed now I've said that so we've got all bits of flash and everything coming out there I'm sure that is all flash um, so we've got walls here some flash on there so we've got walls with some pulley detail I'm sure it's pulley detail. Um, they kind of look like speakers almost. And then we've got the, the roof here. This is the part of the roof of the front undercarriage bay. Like that. And then we've got the, this is the rear undercarriage bay. As you can see on here. Beautiful detail, rivet detail and everything. Really, really nice. So we've got two of those. In fact, they're not the same, but they're... Uh, they both go in the same location and that's so thin it's actually bubbled through there so that's no problem little piece of plastic card on the back of there that'll fill that in no problem at all and then we've got side wall pieces here they're all pretty much the same looking at it and they've got that little detail there if somebody can tell me what that is I'd be interested to know it almost looks like a little loudspeaker or a, a siren off a car alarm Shh, don't they add that <laughs> um, got some little actuator rods here by the look of things Tiny, tiny little parts. Tiny, tiny little parts on there, you know. Oh, they're beautiful. More sidewall detail. Yeah, this is the one I saw Jared had this one. It was all like sticking out. I got a feeling that it's supposed to be vertical, but it's got broken off because of the packaging. So, well done. And then we've got some um, electrical boxes in that one. And then we've got some bulkheads here, which are quite stunning. Beautiful detail on them. Beautiful detail on that one. Really, really nice. Another one there. Surely we should have four bulkheads now. 
or maybe the other bulkheads parts of the parts of the bomb bay but there we go so that's that's all that I'm just gonna check it a manual to see if I have got any bulkheads missing while I'm here fresh and then uh, and then get it all put away okay so there we go lots and lots of parts individually bagged up and then put into big bags so that's all going to be in there nice and safe. I really can't believe more of this didn't get damaged. It's incredible how how great it's come, <laughs> how great it is, you know, how it's been delivered because you think it's it's been on airplanes, trucks and everything just to, to get to the UK. Um, you know, when you look at Jared's, his, his went the other side of the world and that one was also okay. So, uh, right, so let's move on now. Let's have a look at the uh, the cockpit parts. I just made a fatal error there. I just went like that with all this flash on the bench and just pushed it all off onto my lap. And some of it may be parts, so I'll have to now get round with a, a, one of those um, rolly things. I can't think what you call them, but you roll along and it, everything sticks to them. Um, and uh, pick up all the parts because I may have just put some parts on the floor. So then, this is box three, cockpit and standard weapons. Now, as I explained before, the kit comes with, obviously a cockpit, but it also comes with a standard weapon set, but you can buy an additional set of Mark 82 bombs and you can buy um, an additional set of ALCMs or um, Air Launch Cruise Missiles, AL, ALCAMs. Um, and I've bought both, but the Mark 82 bombs are out of stock and I'm waiting for them to arrive. So, um, and in a minute you'll see why. So again, we've got the similar thing, we've got the box split up into two. Loads and loads of backed parts, and we can see here we've got some uh, injection molded parts as well. Now I've seen Jared's uh, review of this, so I know what's coming, and also we've all seen the cockpit one. Um, and again, we've got loads of parts bagged up together, which is not a good thing. Oh dear. Right, so um, let's get this to one side, and then we can have a look at what we've got in here. Let's start off with the weapons, and you can see that these are injection molded, and they are beautiful, and they are actually. AMK. Now I believe the Mark 82 bombs are also AMK. So these are GBU 16s. I'm terrible on my weapons. I really should do some research. And uh, but this is the beautiful AMK one piece molding. You can see they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then they've got this stack system so you can stack them up and they won't get damaged obviously unless you put them that way up and then you'll be putting down on these fins. But we can see here you've got the fins enclosed fins extended um, and they are absolutely gorgeous beautiful detail on them I'm not sure about accuracy I'm sure somebody will tell me in the comments below or if this is a premiere then in the comments on the right hand side but um, basically yeah they are AMK's weapons really really nice good reputation apparently they're very good they certainly look bloody lovely to me so that's our GBU 16s and then we've also got some JDAMs, are they? Yeah, J GBU31 JDAMs. So these are those beautiful bombs where you get the, the nice textured finish on them. And then you've got the carrier here, they go in. And um, again, they are made by AMK and they are in these beautiful pallets, stackable pallets. So you can stack them up together for transportation and not get damaged. Really, really nice, but again, Beautifully moulded, really, really crisp. Go to time with your texture on these guys. And if you are one of my regular followers, you'll know I did some texture work uh, recently on my Sherman tank, which I must get another video on. Um, I found another way of doing texture as well. So I'm going to cover that in another video very shortly. And I think that would suit these really well. So um, that's our standard weapons. And then we've got here a little bag of resin parts, which will be our... Are pylons and I'm not sure of the correct name for them but they're the, the, the thing that goes between the pylon and the bomb um, this thing these here so these are our bomb racks you can see they're very very finely detailed it's beautiful detail on them basically a b52 bomber is a big open space and it's able to carry loads and loads of different things you could just put different bracketry in and stuff and put rotary launchers and everything in there and here we've got our, um, again, I don't know the names of them, but they actually hold the bomb. And when somebody says the name, we're going to say, oh yeah. <laughs> um, they actually hold the bomb between the pylon and the, well, they're, they're supporting the bomb. Um, and then here we've got more bomb racks there. And then we've got our, 
Is that a sniper pod? Or is that a lightning pod? I can't remember now. But it's beautifully moulded. And then we've got the um, the actual that's the actual pylon for this. So that's going to sit on there somehow. Lovely. Really, really nice. So I'm not sure I should have more than one of those. I'll just have to check. All right, so that's that all bagged up. But once again, I've individually bagged things up so they uh, don't get damaged. These flat sheets, I put them in back to back so they won't get damaged. So um, that's all good to go. There we are. And these bombs here, make sure when you put these in, you've got these little narrow fins on here that are going to get broken off. And if they go up against these, then they're going to get snapped off. So be careful of that. And also, if you put it the other way around, obviously, they'll be up against the box. So careful they don't get broken. Right, so on this side, we've got our bags of parts for the cockpit. We'll have a very quick look through these. And we've also got some more weapons parts here. So let's get that box out of the way. It's amazing how light the plastic is compared to all the resin. Right, so let's get these bags out of the way. We've got some more weapon stuff here. So we'll get the cockpit over there. And then we'll look at this weapon stuff. Right, so. Is that our H Sam HSABs? I can't think what they're called now. I know they're called HSABs. Right, so what have we got in here? We've got a pair of wing tanks, which look very nice. No detail on them, they should have um, weld detail on them. Um, not quite sure about the shape either, they look a little bit... I don't know, though. They, they, are, they are good. Um, interesting to see, actually. I'll just show you something. Okay, so now I'm going to digress. These tanks, um, obviously the 48 scale tanks you get with the kit. So you've got a left and a right, or a port and starboard. Um, you can see they've got the pylons on them there and everything all made in one. Now, as we all know, the kits, the tanks in the model collect kits, the 72nd scale ones are awful. The tanks in the AMT artillery kits are awful. And I've actually, I know the Airwaves tanks you can buy, I think are too long. So I've actually, using my books and stuff and photographs, not drawings, never drawings unless you know them to be good. I've actually made these. Now, these tanks have actually been sent to um, Rob over in America and he's actually going to fit these onto his model collect kit to see how they look because obviously I don't have a built model. I can't fit them on and see how they look. But these are designed for the model collect kit wing with the holes and everything, and the pins and everything designed to fit the model collect holes. And you can see that I've actually put in the, the weld lines on there as well. So we've got a, a radial weld line there, a radial weld line there, and then a the longitudinal weld line there. And... Um, I think mine are maybe a little bit too pointy. I may need to redo them, actually remaster them and make them a little bit less pointy. Because, But I think these are a little bit too round. I'm not sure. But what's interesting is I did this from photographs and that was the only scale I had was by measuring other parts of the aircraft that were in the same distance from the camera, like in views when they're taken vertically upwards. And um, these are 134 mil long. So times that by 48 divided by 72. Um should give you the length of these which comes at about 89 millimeters now bearing in mind I did these from video from um, photographs here we go I'm really chuffed with this they are 91.6 so they're two millimeters too long so I guess you could reshape the front in fact that's probably what I will do reshape the front to make it more like this one if this one is correct and then it'll be the correct length and everything so I'm really chuffed with that um, I'm going to do another video all about them anyway, but I uh, thought I'd get that in. <laughs> um, so there we go, that's our wing tanks. Then we've got the pylons. These are the outboard pylons. I think they go between the engines either side. And then we've got our main pylons here, which go between two and three engines. And then, is it two and three engines or is it... It's two and three pylons, isn't it, I guess? And it's going to be between, what is it, three, four and five, six engines. But these are actually adjacent to the fuselage on the bottom of the wing. So they're really, really nice. And then we've got our pylons here. They're gonna go on like that, I'm assuming. And then we've got our, is this the H-SAB thing, whatever they call it? And that's gonna go on like that, I'm guessing, or like that, is it? 
I don't know. As I say, I should know my weapons better, but I'll just show you all that because you guys will know what you're looking at, even if I don't. You can see the lovely detail on there. Lovely detail on there. Really beautifully made. And then we've got these here, whatever they are. <laughs> it's embarrassing, I should know. But some lovely detail on there, detail all the way around. Come on, camera, focus. There we go. And that detail on there is actually raised, so it's it's correct. These masters must have taken a, an age to make. Beautiful. So that's all them, and they're all bagged up together, and because of their shape and everything, won't get damaged as long as you don't knock them together too much and rub away all that lovely rivet detail. So we'll just put them to one side for now. So let's have a look at this cockpit. So we'll start off with the seats. Seats and odds and ends by the look of it. All looks so tiny when you look at it in 48th and 72nd, it's going to be minuscule. So we've got seats here, which are bagged separately, which is nice to see. So these are, we've got a jump seat there. So if I can get that one to come out, there we go. So we've got a seat and a jump seat. So there's a little jump seat there with all the beautiful rivet detail on it and a tiny bubble at the top, top but we're not going to worry about that. Detail on the sides. Then we've got a one of the four upper seats here. It's really, really nice. So there's four of those for the upper deck. Put that back in there so it doesn't get knocked off the bench or eaten by stray dogs. And then there's the um, radar and nav. This is downstairs. Again, you can see this is all just basically a a smaller version of the 30 second scale and then that one there with the ejection rails on them and then once again we've got that beautiful step here in fact I'm going to show you a picture okay there we go so a bit of light glaring but we can see that step there and we've got the same over here and then when you actually look at this resin molded part you can see just how close it is to the real thing we've even got the seal on there so yeah, really, really nice, really beautiful. You've got the, the treads on there. And then you've got all these um, panels here, which are absolutely gorgeous. Really cleanly cast, tiny air bubble there. But you know, that's what happens. Lovely. So they can go there out of the way. And then here we've got another big bag of parts. You know, they've gone back to taking a bit of care in the wrapping now. So, beautiful panel there with um, the pressed stiffening. Another one here. Again, all those knobs and everything just dying, crying out to have cables added to them and stuff. Instrument panel. Again, nice. I haven't got the damage there. I noticed that Jared had some damage on his. So, yeah, really, really nice. So that's that bag there. I want to make sure I keep everything in proper bags because I'm like that. It's sad, isn't it? Right. There's the. Uh, this is basically a direct copy of the three. Well, the thirty-second scale is probably a direct copy of this, but um, that's going to go in there like that. And we've got our bunk. So that's our bunk area sorted. Really nice. Just trying out to have a Playboy magazine or something on there. Don't know if they were allowed that, mind. Probably weren't. Um, and then, I say weren't, probably aren't, because these things are still flying, remember, and will be for many years to come. Oh, come on. You'll be so careful not to break anything. I don't know how that managed to get stuck in there, but anyway. So here we've got the. Um, these are the upper faces for the ejection doors, I'm thinking. They look like they're bent, but they're not that, that shape. So that's the, they're going to go on the inside of the fuselage. So when you look through the glazing on the top, you're going to see these bars, which is uh, something that's missing on every other kit out there. So it'd be nice to see those. 
and then we've got our instrument panel and side panels and everything that almost fits looks like it would fit perfectly in a model collect kit doesn't it <laughs> so uh, there we go um then we got our control handles and everything there rudder pedals again it's just and trim wheels this, this is just i keep saying it it's um it's the same so there we go and then we've got our thin sheet there with uh i think it's your rhino and we've got the um the entrance hatch there with all the surrounding detail in it really really nice really really stunning and then the final bag which will finish this review off we've got the um this is the radar and nav guy there at the bottom so they've got their screens and everything there and then we've got some beautiful flooring panels and everything so we've got interesting to see that that lever is gone now whether that's a separate part on here or it's been broken off I'm not sure that's the first thing I was going to look for when I saw that so um, here we've got the that's the floor that's the entrance hatch there so that's the floor or is that the entrance hatch there that's the floor downstairs that's the floor upstairs and then you've got the cockpit floor in front of that that's right um, and then we've got the this is the rearward facing panel again I said that that lever is missing so it's either been snapped off at the factory snapped off in the bag and gone missing or or was never there in the first place or maybe they should provide it as a piece of photo etch but you're never going to see it anyway so not really too much to write home about and well, we would look to that one and then we've got our this is our lower rear panel there that's the door into the um, undercarriage bay and then bomb bay so there we go guys that is basically that so Hope you've enjoyed this this has been the review of the um the cockpit the standard weapons and the beautiful undercarriage setup for this model uh it being the 148 scale hph b52 hope you've enjoyed it if it has been a premiere thank you all for commenting and i'll say good night now to everyone or goodbye say so save having to um write it all down frantically on the keyboard before they shut us down so um yeah thanks for watching tune in Tomorrow, maybe Tuesday, and I'll have another review up for you on this uh, on this kit, and it should get us pretty much done. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy modelling. Bye bye.